What's going on? It's Till here and in this video I'm gonna walk you through a little case study where I had a chat with James and James is a really interesting person. He's in the career advice space and he bootstrapped his business to $30,000 per month and he's now in the process of scaling to seven figures. So in this case study, I'm gonna give you some behind the scenes of how we work together, how he gained proof of concept for his offer after trying a couple things that didn't work so well and how now he's in the process of building out an ecosystem for his business and he's scaling to seven figures. Now, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And that being said, Let's dive right into it. Great to have you, James, and appreciate you hopping on board and uh, doing this little interview here. So it's been an interesting journey, right? Um, back when we connected, let's go back in time, like that was like 14 weeks ago or so, probably a bit more. And I think back then you were running uh, a funnel for your business. Um, from a webinar that led people to a high ticket offer, right? And what were like, first and foremost, give people context in terms of what you do, what your business is, your niche, um, and what you've been like doing back then when we connected, like with that webinar, with the high ticket offer, and some of the challenges that uh, came with that. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I essentially help, or have a program which helps people get hired into um, these specific companies. Um, so it's kind of like top level professional services and, and my program helps them navigate the, the, um, the, the hiring process, which the rejection rate for is, is very high. Um, and so there's a ton of people all with very similar skills trying to get these jobs and to really stand out, you need to know how the process works and what to do to actually stand out. So that's what I help people do. And, Originally, when I, I mean, I've been through a lot of iterations of doing stuff with this business. Um, for a long time, I was doing more high ticket programs. So I was, I had Facebook ads going to a webinar, going to a call, um, and it was working. It was just, I'd say, not working well enough to be profitable in the long term. And also <laughs> to, um, it, it was taking a lot of my time. Um, because you know, I was doing the coaching and the sales calls and everything. So it's kind of crazy. Um, uh, and I did have, a, I did have some people helping me, but yeah, a lot of it fell, fell onto me. Um, and I think the key thing that I was looking for when, when we started working together was the fact that I had previously sold just a, a you know, a, a, a standalone self-learning program rather than a, than a high level coaching program. Um, and I knew it worked and I, I wanted to kind of get that going to see, you know, would that take some of the strain off me doing all the coaching? Um, so when we started working together, that was, that was my aim. And I think as well, my aim was to really understand my market better, understand what I should be offering. Um, yeah. So that was, that was really the starting point. Yeah. And I think I remember <clears throat> when we talked uh, like there were a lot of things going on. You were doing the coaching as part of the high ticket offer. And also like you were doing like a lot of sales calls back when we talked like back to back sales calls. And I think it was also like draining your energy a little bit. If I remember correctly, like doing all those calls, the coaching calls in doing all those sales calls from the webinar. Right. Was that also something that was like a, uh, you know, not necessarily the way you wanted to have the business set up at the time. Yeah, it was too much. It, it was, it was definitely too much. So it was something that I was, yeah, looking to provide value um, to people, but, but escape from having to be the doing everything. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. It's also interesting because sometimes, you know, people, they, when they start out, especially it usually makes sense for them to start with a high ticket offer instead of with a, an online course. So for most people, I actually recommend they start with a high ticket offer like you did. But in your case, also to give people some more context, you 
actually have an audience. You had an audience in place when we connected and you also have a blog that was getting quite uh, some good traffic, right? Like how, like how big was your audience more or less when uh, we started and like your blog um, was getting, your blog was getting some traffic, right? But it wasn't really converting necessarily the way you wanted to, you weren't monetizing it so much uh, in an effective way that would, yeah, that would, that was working for you, right? Yeah. So my audience was about 10,000 people. I've got a Facebook group, email list, etc. cetera. Um, and then my, um, yeah, my, my website was getting about 30,000 visitors a month and I was converting zero. So I knew that that was something that I needed to change. Why is it, why is that though? Why were you, cause I know, and we'll get to that later. I think now you're making like seven K a month just organically from your blog. Mm -hmm. Have a chat about like the journey and how we got there. But like, why do you think you were not making any money from like that blog back then? Did you not have an offer or? No well, yes, yeah, essentially I, I didn't, at first I didn't really know what to do. Um, you know, I'd, I'd built up, I'd spent a lot of time with SEO and then just had no idea what I was doing after that. Um, so I was sending people from the website to sign up for the high ticket webinar. Right. But the, the quality of the people coming was, was not good. Um, and I was just getting, I was getting loads of applications that were not good. Um, yeah. So, so I just, so I essentially turned that off uh, and then had, had nothing, like I said. So it was, it was a big, big waste of time. And that was again, yeah, something that I wanted to, to look into and, and change as, as part of, um, as part of doing this. Yeah. And I think this is also interesting because there's always like different buckets in every audience, right? Not everyone is going to be ready for a high ticket offer. It's only mm -hmm. a certain part of your audience. So maybe like the organic traffic you were getting to your blog, uh, it's just more receptive for a mid ticket offer um, than a high ticket offer. Because once we switched from that high ticket uh, offer to that mid ticket course that we launched and we, we put that evergreen launch in place, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, now things are looking different. You're getting more sales and you have these sales coming in consistently. So sometimes it's also about understanding your audience, understanding like uh, who are these people, like how much intimacy do they want when working with you? Do they just want to have information? How much are they willing to invest? And then crafting an offer that's appropriate for that right. segment of the audience, which it sounds like in the beginning that high ticket offer was not really the right uh, type of offer for that blog audience. And now we have something that's resonating a lot more with them and it's making you more money, right? Now you're making like, I think, what was it when we last talked, like uh, just from the blog and from the evergreen launch, how much are you currently making? Was it like seven, seven K or eight K a month or something? Yeah, like it's, that? it's about that. Yeah. Nice. Not bad going from zero to exactly. And there's like it's, it's organic, no retargeting or anything. So it's just totally free. Yeah. That's awesome. It's cool because it's like base revenue uh, with no advertising spend, just coming from the SEO that you already did. So it gives you some cash flow that you can use to maybe test ads or just pay for certain bills. And it's always good to have like that profit center or that uh, base revenue in your business, especially when it's free, you know? So that's cool. Mm -hmm. But so let's go back. So you, you were selling this high ticket offer via webinar. You, mm -hmm. you were booking calls, but it didn't really resonate so much. You were spending a lot of time doing all of this. It wasn't as profitable long-term as it should have been. Then we connected and we essentially started a whole launch. We, we said, hey, let's go and do a product launch together. Let's launch a mid-ticket online course something for, I think it was $697, right? The mm -hmm. price point. And let's see how that goes with your audience. And uh, then let's look at how we can turn that more evergreen once we've done the launch. But one of the reasons we also did the launch is to, to gain feedback, to see like how this offer converts and to change the structure of your, your offers and your business a little bit. So like the first thing, like what's, 
what was like the, the first thing that we did? It was like um, essentially coming up with the offer with like uh, what will be included, the pricing. And then what was like the biggest takeaway for you, like from doing the launch together? What was like, what do you believe made like the difference um, that made this $697 offer, you know, sell pretty well during the launch and after? In your opinion, what do you think it was? Yeah, so I mean, I, I had a lot of data already. Um, and I think I just kind of undervalued it a bit. Um, so what I think probably even, obviously, you know, the, the program has, you know, made me, I don't know, 30,000 or something so far, which is good uh, in total. Obviously, really good. But more than that, I think the what, what it brought was was just under a kind of framework for understanding that that data a bit more um and, and you know really realizing that the offer is so important um and understanding your customers is so important yeah. Uh, so yeah so that that really you know even more than the technicalities of do this video now do this which was great i think that first bit which i did spend a lot of time on you know because you provided, you know, a big sheet of lots of data about what does your customer want, what are their pains, fears, blah, blah, blah. blah. All that stuff was probably the most valuable. Yeah, and I always tell people, like, that's the backbone of your business. It's the backbone of your, your launch, right? We, we call it, uh, like, the launch story discovery doc or whatever. Like, and essentially, it's all about, first and foremost, right, understanding who is your ideal client or customer and then also figuring out what's like the big idea of your launch mm -hmm. what's like the unique mechanism right what's like that secret sauce that's going to make your marketing your messaging stand out from what everyone else is doing and what a lot of people do right is they they don't dial in the foundations of their business a lot of people they want to do tactical stuff like oh let's uh, do Facebook ads or let's do like a, a webinar or let's like do some growth hacking. And it's all about tactics, tactics. And they don't want to dial in the foundations of their business. They don't want to take the time. Most people, when, when they're presented with a document like this, they will rush it. They will fill it out like in, in 15 minutes, like one sentence. And like, usually if it doesn't happen that often, but when, when someone does it, when they're working with me, I have to tell them, Hey, look, you need to, you're self-sabotaging. You need to like spend more time. This is really the backbone of everything. So if this is not dialed in, if this isn't done properly, everything else that follows your scripts, uh, the sales, the sales part, uh, emails, anything is going to not be on point. So you did a really good job there with that initial messaging and dialing in the big idea. Um, I mean, what, what was like the, the, the big, the big idea or the unique mechanism or, or like, how do you, how do you think we, we narrowed down like your messaging and your offer? Cause I, I remember like vaguely, like, because it was like, like 15 weeks ago or something now, or even more, but what do you think was like the big thing or the main thing that made your offer like lethal? what it is now basically <laughs> lethal <laughs> like that. um i think i think the key was um well it, it was understanding what people want so i and i think a lot of people fall into this trap is is you think you know right so for me it was like oh people just people want to get hired at these jobs and that is the point but what is what's the kind of underlying pain and fear you know and it's things like am I going to go to an interview and just freeze up mm -hmm. or am I, you know, I, I know that I need to meet these certain people, but I've no idea how to, you know, I've tried these things. It doesn't work. Or, you know, I, I want to make my, my um, cover letter amazing, but how do I do that? You know, there's so much stuff out there. So <laughs> it's understanding those, those key points that, that get to the end. Cause if you just say, Hey, I'll help you get a job. Or I just have a million questions like what, how, Right. So you need to, yeah. you need to really, like you said, it's the kind of the unique mechanism of what, what, what's the pathway. Mm -hmm. um, 
and matching up kind of what you're teaching. And I'm still doing it now, right? I'm still, and I think what, what we did set me on this process of knowing that um, it's like conversion rate optimization in all different bits. It's like just keep continuously mm-hmm. doing it because, yeah. you know, the more you can do it, the better it's going to get because, um, you know, someone said this, this to me the other day, you know, traffic's never a problem. The problem is that offer and the pain points and really understanding, um, you know, what people want. So yeah, so that it was that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's really cool. Like we did, uh, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't all smooth for sure as well. Like it took some time, right. Some, some iterations, but mm-hmm. it, you, you did a good job and we were able to dial it in. And then obviously everything else went really well because you already had some copywriting skills you had some sales funnel skills. I think you were like, you had some prior experience. So like your, your whole launch funnel was really awesome. You like used the templates that essentially we provide and you like adjusted them and like you did a really good job with that as well. Right. Um, and then like what happened next? Like you, we, we dialed in like that, the unique mechanism got really clear with the messaging. Right. And then uh, based on that, obviously you followed uh, the whole process. You put together the launch scripts. We put together like three videos to warm people up, to pre-sell your online course. We put together a sales video. Uh, We built out the whole funnel, the whole Mm -hmm. copy and everything together. And then uh, pretty much we went into launch mode. Like, um, and I think, if I remember correctly, you were getting also some people signing up to your launch list, to the early bird list organically, right? Which I think is something you, you didn't do so much before, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Mm-hmm. So how was that? Like, is that the first time you were using like Facebook and places like that to, to get organic traffic uh, in that form? Or have you, were you doing that before as well? Not really. Um, so yeah, that was... Um, and it also, I uncovered the fact that, that, um, that LinkedIn was the massive for me. So I think, I, I don't know, I made like seven sales di- that I could directly track back to LinkedIn. Um, and which was great cause I, I literally spent just a few minutes posting random stuff. Um, so I know, I mean, that's something that is, is in, it's, it's something that I'm going to build up more and more, um, but yeah, something that I uncovered a lot from what we did together, definitely. Nice. Yeah, I remember now LinkedIn was big. Like you were posting on Facebook and LinkedIn and your LinkedIn started to take off, right? Mm-hmm. Because, and it makes sense because you're, you're uh, essentially giving career advice. That's like your niche. Yeah, and that's where all, all these people stuff. hang out. Exactly. And that's where people hang out who are looking to get these jobs. So I think some of your posts even went, went viral or I don't know, remember if they went viral, but they got quite some traction. Mm-hmm. awesome and yeah i mean we're literally just hiring someone pretty much full-time to to help with linkedin not just linkedin but like it's one of the first things she's going to be doing which is like linkedin is huge for organic marketing so that's awesome yeah it is yeah it is, it is. and then basically so we were building how big was, was your launch list by the time we launched uh do you remember it, it was about 750 um people uh, i actually made a mistake that i was i, I and again i think you've, you've said this in other other places but um that it's all about you know the, the amount of numbers that you have so i was like oh the, the bigger the list the, the more um or the better it's going to be so what i was doing was anyone who's signing up for my website in terms of getting a lead magnet type thing i was just automatically adding them to the launch list Mm -hmm. um which was silly because the people actually need to opt in to have you know that that they're kind of the you know the process of them give you like micro conversions or whatever it is um so in terms of actual people who signed up and 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 put their hand up was about 350 Mm -hmm. um so yeah not much so it shows you know how how a quite a yeah, exactly. So it shows how quite a small, um, small group of people can, can give you some good results. 
Yeah. And that's what I always tell people like, uh, audience size is irrelevant. Uh, mm, totally. pretty, much, pretty much irrelevant, right? Like essentially you, you were building this list of 700 plus people, but like just trying to boost it almost like the vanity metrics, getting more people on there. So you just, you were just automatically signing up people uh, to the launch list who didn't express, they didn't express any interest themselves in the launch. They didn't go through that micro, uh, micro commitment of opting in. So in the end, the core of your launch list was, was about 300, 300, 350 people. Mm -hmm. And in like the launch, once you launch, like uh, how, what was like the launch revenue? Uh, it was like a five figure launch, right? It was, it was, uh, yeah. And I've got my extremely heavy prize. Here. <laughs> awesome. Well-deserved. Um, it was about 15. 15 K. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that goes to show there's people with uh, email lists of a hundred thousand people. They're not doing 15 K uh, in a week with their launch. They're doing uh, zero with their launch. And I know because I've talked to a couple of people who've built up huge email lists from their blogs and stuff, and they're like making nothing. So 15 K, like if you divide 15 K by 300, what's that? That's like, is that $30 or how much is that? Like, what's the, the know, earning? I'm terrible at public four, math. Well, it's 43 if you do 350. So yeah, yeah. forty three dollars per person. Yeah, so earning earning per lead forty three dollars. Uh, that's good. Like that's 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 good. So you don't need a huge list. That's awesome. And uh, so then we did the launch fifteen k, which is awesome. We wrapped it up. We took all the data from the launch. Learned a ton. It's like a lot of market uh, insight that comes from that. And then what's like the next thing that we did? Or mm. what was like the next step in the process? Yeah, so I, I mean, my big goal for the after, straight after the launch was putting was was monetizing the website. Um, so and and I know so we talked about that and had that evergreen launch strategy with deadline funnel and stuff. So um, so basically, the, the next week I just recorded recorded in some new videos, tweaked a few things based on the, how the launch had gone, and just set it off. Um, and yeah, essentially I haven't changed it in the past, you know, since, since that happened, since we did the launch and it's, it's, it's gone really well. Yeah. So it's gonna, you know, it's hopefully going to make me 70 to 80 K a year just from nothing, which is great. <laughs> just from nothing. I like how you said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you know, so that's like we said in the beginning, like seven to eight K. So that's always what I tell people like the launch it's like the, the grand opening. That's why I stopped calling it a launch. I call it the grand opening. So people understand it's about uh, making a, a bunch of noise, making as much money as possible with that launch. And then essentially, that's just that first domino stone that's, uh, that's tipping over. That's like the, the starting shot. And the real money is made in the next 12 months after the launch. Once you have the data from the launch, you have the offer, you can then start launch stacking or you can turn it into an evergreen launch. In your case, you simply took the launch, the exact, you had all the material in place from that launch. You were paid 15 uh, K essentially to do market research, which is awesome. Right. And then you, you took it, uh, re-recorded a couple uh, elements, but you had the core offer. Everything was in place. The whole messaging, everything was dialed in. You just simply turn it evergreen and now every new person who signs up from your blog to the launch, they're taken through the launch. So maybe just take like a, like a few seconds to explain people like what an evergreen launch is like, because you've now built it, you know how it works. Like how is it different from a regular launch? And like, what, what was the process of like implementing that for your blog? Yeah. So it's, it's essentially you, you, um, you, when people sign up to a website, however they sign up, uh, then you, they, they go through their, essentially their own version of a launch. Um, and deadline funnels is a great tool which you can use to 
individually track who is going through it and, and give them their own time countdown timer and stuff. Um, so, you know, rather than saying the, la- the launch is open for this week and it ends on this day, everyone will get their own day that it ends on. Um, so, you know, it just creates that scarcity and urgency, um, which is, which is really helpful. Um, and so, yeah, so it just, it just runs on its own. So, yeah. you, you know, you set up all your emails, you set up your video pages and deadline funnel, and then, yeah, it just, it just, it just goes. It's like a 365 day launch, right? Uh, depending on when someone joins the launch, their deadline is different. The videos are sent to them on different days. So it's almost like the launch is customized to them, to their specific time when they joined. So anyone can go through the launch every day of the year. And depending on when they join, the dates and everything's just going to be different, which is, it's automated. Essentially, it's just an automated launch, right? Mm -hmm. That's making money without you having to put in extra work. So it's it's more like passive income now, actually, than like having to put in, the first launch is more like active. You've got to put in the work. The evergreen launch that you then built based on that is like, it is passive income because you're, it's all SEO traffic from your blog and you don't have to tweak much. Right. So that's awesome. Yeah. And what's like the plan now? Like, I know you're now taking the same, uh, pretty much offer like the work we did and you're now turning it into a webinar again, but this time not for a high ticket offer, but actually a webinar for the same offer with the same messaging, everything you've learned from that initial launch. You now have the data, you have like the raw material, you're, you put together a webinar and you're now scaling that webinar, right? So just give, give a little bit more context in terms of what the plan is there. Uh, and then I think we can wrap up this, yeah. this interview pretty soon. Yeah, so that's, that's it. So really, so, um, so yeah, so everything that I've learned and, and because, you know, the, the key as well was, was validating that offer. That was one of the good things about the launch was, yeah, you know, people want it. Um, so at the moment I'm doing two things actually. So first, first thing I'm, I'm actually redoing the program right now. Um, mm-hmm. because I've had, I've got about the first hundred, about a hundred people in, in the program. Um, and so I'm, I've got a small group of those people who are helping me re just redo it and make it better, um, mm-hmm. based on all the things that I've learned and, and what people want to know. And and yeah, at the same time, scaling up through a, through a webinar. Um, and this is, so I've got the evergreen stuff on the website running in the background. I've got my paid traffic going to the webinar. And then um, eventually when I, <laughs> when I get to it, um, I'm going to have a kind of either some more live launches or a kind of another evergreen launch after the webinar. Um, mm. You know, something like so it, so it, it just sends people through all these different pass, pathways because you know some people and i think you know i think the difference is that some people just need different stuff right when they want to buy yeah. different different um triggers and for some people the launch works better in terms of the customer mm-hmm. and, and for some people the webinar is better so um yeah. so okay. i think by you know combining them it it would it would definitely be the most powerful mm-hmm. uh, way of doing it. it obviously takes time, but you know, eventually that's the plan. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Essentially you have proof of concept from that uh, launch that we did together. You've validated your offer and now you can add more complexity again, right? The launch was very like simple, very tight, like process. Now more complexity can be added again and you're building out an ecosystem of offers Uh, right now you have like your core offer you have that running as an evergreen launch it's making like seven eight k per month from your blog you now taking the same offer uh scaling up with pay traffic using the webinar you're then gonna maybe add another evergreen launch uh you then maybe gonna do additional launches to bring up the cash flow so now you're you're really in that launch stacking phase or that ecosystem phase where you're building out everything and making, really dialing it in Mm -hmm. front end. And then also probably adding a a high ticket offer again in the back end, but in a way where you're getting applications for free, right? And you're 
uh, you're doing it in a way where it's not burning you out, right? So, then- totally. Yeah, I, and I think that's that's the thing. Um, is yeah. is definitely the way to do it. Um, and yeah, and it's and and I've got I've got plans to expand into other other areas as well. Uh, both more offers for this audience and also other um, other audiences as well. So it's kind of once you know once you get one thing sorted and you know the process, you can you can just do it again. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So how much are you currently making from this business? From all like from the evergreen launch, from the webinar, everything. Like what's like the monthly revenue more or less? So it's about. So, well, for the, for, for, or well, in April. So April, we just made it past 30 for the month. That's nice. Awesome. So yeah, we're plan- planning to get up to, you know, 50, a hundred in the next three, three, four months. That's the plan. Awesome. Yeah. So 30 K this month, April, we still have six days to go. So uh, I'm sure you'll have some more sales coming in. Um, and then, yeah, scaling to seven figures. Uh, making the ecosystem tight and just putting more money to pay that while letting everything build. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to hit uh, seven figures or multiple seven figures this year. So that's awesome. It's the plan. <laughs> yeah. I'm pumped, man. It's going to be great. Me too. Cool. Well, appreciate you taking the time, hopping on board here with this, uh, little case study interview, you know, sharing some of the, the wins, but also some of the challenges and mm-hmm. giving some insights into the process and uh, all the best with um, moving forward and, and scaling it to seven figures. And uh, yeah, I'm pumped to see where you're going to take this in 2019. Me too. So I hope you enjoyed this interview with James. I think it's a cool little case study because it shows that It's not always easy. Sometimes it takes some iterations to get to where you want to be, but it is 100% possible. Now, if you're an expert looking to get your own expert business to the $10,000 per month level, or if you're more like James, you're already successful, you've validated your offer, you have gained proof of concept, and you're looking to scale your business to high six figures and even seven figures, then click on the link in this video. There should be a link somewhere in this video or in the description. And I would like to invite you to a free one-on-one strategy session where we take a deep dive and really map out a plan together to do this. And it's gonna be tailored to your specific business and to your unique situation. So if this is of interest, then click on the link in this video, apply for a free one-on-one session and we're going to take a deep dive map out everything and come up with a custom plan for you to grow your expert business